So we're going to look at the economics of exhaustible resources. Let's say the government will ban the sale of coal after the end of two years. A mining company has only two years then to sell coal this year and next year to sell all of its remaining stock of coal of 150 units. So we'll set Q equal to 150. We're going to assume that interest rates are 10% or I, which is just interest rates equals 0.1. The marginal cost of selling coal is constant at $5. So it's constant this year and it's going to be $5 next year as well. Coal will be sold in each year if the following condition holds. P subscript 1 is a price this year. P subscript 2 is a price next year. So what does this mean? Uh, the present value of selling this year, that's the, the left-hand side, equals the present value of selling next year. So it's just a price that we can sell coal for next year minus the marginal cost, and we're discounting that, that back. Uh, one period. So that's what 1 plus i is representing here is the discount factor. What I want to do next is uh, I want to take this condition here and solve for p subscript 2. Okay, so doing that, uh, I'm first multiplying everything through by 1 plus the interest rate. Let me get this result. Adding marginal cost. Uh, to the other side, I'm just moving things around here. So price in year two equals the following. Uh, doing some factoring here. Uh, we'll notice that minus MC and plus MC cancel. And then rearranging the price of a unit of coal in year two will equal the following. The demand for coal this year is given by this equation. The demand for coal next year or year two is given by the following equation. So total demand is just Q subscript one plus Q subscript two. So that's what I do down here, get a, uh, an equation for total demand. Adding up these two hundreds, we get this. And then a key thing here is that our result from the end of the, the slide, the last slide, uh, where we solve for P subscript two, I'm now going to substitute that into our total demand equation. So plugging in for P subscript two, this expression, solving for P subscript one, ultimately is what we're going to do here. So first I'm going to distribute this minus sign like that. And then I'm just going to simplify here by dis again, distributing this minus sign through what's in parentheses. And this is what we had the, in the last slide here. If I'm going too fast, please pause this or rewind this. Um, moving some things around, uh, the 2P subscript 1 minus P subscript 1 times I, just moving that over. Going to factor out the left-hand side now. So factoring out a P subscript 1 term on the left-hand side. Then we're going to divide through by what's in parentheses. We get this expression. And now we're going to substitute. Q is 150, MC is 5, and I equals 0.1. So these were all numbers given at the beginning of this uh, problem. So making those substitutions and then simplifying the price per unit of coal in year one is a little under $120 the price in year two. So using our expression for the price in year two, the P subscript two, and evaluating that by plugging 119.29 in for the price in year one, subtracting out the marginal cost there, accounting for the interest rate, the price in year two is a little over $130. The amount of coal that will be sold in year one we go back to our demand equation and just plug in the price for year one. So around a little over 80 units will be sold in year one. And in year two, the firm will sell almost 70 units of coal. And you'll note here that the amount of coal sold in year one plus year two equals the amount of coal that this mining company had available to sell. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.